Good evening. Welcome again to another super exciting edition of So in a Bourbon. Charlie, why don't you tell them what we're doing tonight? Welcome to part two of Palette Destroyer Television. Tonight we have the eight year single barrel peerless. Okay, peerless, Kentucky peerless, eight year single barrel bourbon. Yes, everything he said is correct. This is Kentucky Peerless. This is an eight year. This is a single barrel. It is 116.2 proof. It is strictly sweet mash. It is strictly barrel proof. There is no water added and it is non-chill filtered. And it's bourbon. And it's bourbon. And that's why you're here. Yes, so this is part two. If you watched our previous episode on the toasted, Peerless Toasted. Which you should have. And if you haven't, go back and watch yes, it. Yes, you would know that I stood in line the other day to get the Toasted, the first release of the Toasted, and they were also selling this first release of eight-year single barrel bourbon and rye. Picked up a bottle of each. We were going to just whip it out on that last episode, but the Toasted was so daggone good. We felt like it deserved its own episode, and I have a feeling this one's going to deserve its own. And so here we are. Here we are. And that's the summary, and that's it. And it brings up an interesting anecdote. Because how much do I owe you for this bottle? $124 plus tax. That is a lot of money. Don't forget to tax. I will not forget I'm the waiting. tax. I will Venmo you. <laughs> this brings up an interesting point. And I we don't do Venmo. PayPal only. Same difference. We touched on the first episode. $125 is a tremendous amount of money to spend on it any is. bourbon. However, if you know the track record and if you know it's something that typically you enjoy and not only enjoy but you just go crazy over small price to pay well and you also know if you know anything about peerless uh, their least expensive bottles what 80 bucks 70 80 bucks around that yeah. because it is truly a craft distillery they they are not churning out hundreds of thousands of barrels it they have what they have they bottle it here and it they're is they're not sourcing from and they're MGP. not sourcing it and it's theirs and that brings up an interesting kind of dichotomy in the market that we have is no matter how you slice it, right now in the bourbon economy, economy. there is, whether you want to call it a bourbon glut or the market being saturated and prices being inflated, all those things can be true and in all likelihood are. However, go ahead. We are at that sweet point where craft distillers are really starting to have some awesome, more aged product like this eight year single barrel before you. Which leads me in to the point I wanted to make. Yes, we have a glut. There's so much on the market and I feel like every other day there's another special release and I'm like, oh my God, how could we ever afford to buy all this? But there were still people lined up all the way around the block at Peerless on Saturday with to wallet. purchase. And they were buying more than one bottle, believe me. Would you say they had loose wallets? I would say they kept their wallets loose. They had to keep the wallets loose. I don't loose. know about their bung holes, but... We can only pray. I, I, it was nothing. I was standing in line, and then there was $1,000 here and $800 there. I mean, people are spending money still yeah. and, on and quality product. On quality product. And, and this is why... If you watch any of our episodes, you know the one thing that, that I love is a craft distillery. Because when you go to a craft distillery, you are not just another individual through a turnstile, just another marker on a spreadsheet. They are excited you're there, you're moving the needle for them, and they're excited to share. Speaking of which, Mr. Corky Taylor was there signing every bottle for at least a couple hours. I know he was there. Super nice guy. Thank you, I've, Corky. I've met him a couple times and he was very thankful um that that's we were why there. that's why craft distilleries are the best absolutely shall we talk about the color of this particular <sighs> it's red it's red <laughs> it's dark it's thick it, it's i wish we had it on camera when we when i poured it it poured in and it kind of moved around and we both said it looked like, it looked like jello, jello. Like it's it's very viscous, 116.2 proof. Shall we nose? 
it it, it yeah. does put a crazy ring around. Mm. I'm getting a lot of um, a lot of cinnamon, like a cinnamon candy. See, I on that. I like get a red hot. I get your favorite note, which is cherry cola. I I oh. get a. You're right. I get a big cherry cola. I do see the cinnamon. You're right. I, I don't get cinnamon. I get a, a spice. I get okay. a little bit of, the, of rye spice. We do not know the mash There's bill. some rye spice. Um, it's tickling my, it's tickling it, my nose It hairs. does. It, it's, there is a, I would love to know the mash bill on this because it has a funky rye kind of nose to it, but a lot of great burnt sugar, um, cherry cola. Oof. Just a beautiful... I'm getting the cola. I'm not quite getting the cherry, which is funny because that's usually my note that I pick up on. I will tell you this: there, there, you know, your nose in a proof. Yeah, you know, yeah, you there, there is a little ethanol there, but it's pleasant. I just want to drink it. I'm very excited. Cheers, Cheers. peerless. Okay, over there, you need a moment? Man. <laughs> wow. That's... It's baking spice. It's burnt sugar. It's brown sugar. It's caramel. It's vanilla. It's everything that you want. Yeah. It, it's a... First sip is spice. And, and it, it is... It almost has to be a high rye. It, it I would just, think so. it just, I would think it so. almost, and we've been fooled before. But you know, know what? They have a high rye bourbon. I, I know. And they label it a high rye bourbon, yeah, right? But so they this do is a, not labeled that. Do they do a high rye single barrel? I don't know. So it, it is. Good question. It, it is very spice forward. It, it is everything that I love in a bourbon sweet and spicy. It, is not as deep, dark, oaky as I thought it would be, mm -hmm. given some of their other products, especially their double oak side of things. It has a very, very refined finish on it. Um, and absolutely, like, it's, instead of being overpowering, it's a, have some more, your palate says, let's have some more of that. Let, let's see what, what that's about. Of which. <laughs> and, and it literally and just, it keeps you drinking. And it's not super sweet. It's, no, it is not but, super sweet. But, but it's got like everything you want in like a really, like a good pie, like a pie filling without being too sweet. Does that make sense? It, it is incredibly balanced, deep, Cat, like a depth of flavor, um, and that's not to say that it isn't oaky. It is oaky, but it's not over oaked. It's none of the flavor is crazy. It's all very balanced. It gives you sweetness up front. It's perfectly oaked. It, it gives you a nice rye spice, kind of right in the middle of your tongue that just kind of lingers, and. I, I love a rye spice that kind of lingers from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't hit you early. It just kind of sticks around the whole time and it reminds you it's there. Really nice pour, really nice offering. I feel like the finish, there's a battle going on, right? It's a battle between like that rye spice and that That's, chocolate, yes. that semi-sweet chocolate. Yes, that yeah, that is very and well said. And it's like said. they're just like... Which but, one is going to win? But when we talk about depth of flavor, that's really what we're talking yes. about is if flavor's competing for your taste mm -hmm. buds. And this is, this, this is one this where... This has a little Kentucky hug, doesn't it, it? A little bit, but an absolutely crushable, drinkable, sippable bottle of 116 proof. Um, boy, that's nice. How's it compare to the uh, toaster? Hmm. It's a great question, and that's what I'm sure our viewers are saying. Well, which is best? Which is which? Which would you rather have? 
I really feel like they're just two different animals. This is the the toasted to me is flavor on steroids. Mm -hmm. If you just want to just go nuts, right? Like I, I want it all. I want just an absolute party in my mouth. <laughs> Everybody's coming. Everybody's coming. That's that one. If you want if you want classic perfect bourbon. It's the yeah. eight year because it's it's everything you want. It, it's so well balanced, and they're just they're palate destroyers. I feel like are. I feel like the toasted is a little bit more, might be a little more approachable for someone who's maybe not as far into their bourbon experience as maybe we are or our viewers are. Um, hmm. And this one's a little bit more for big boy like. Put your big boy pants on. I can see both. You know what? I, I can yeah. see both sides of that. I, I really think... In, now, they're both not for the, the meat, they're, right? They're not for the faint of heart. <laughs> right. um, they are... Oh, man. I, I God, feel I like they're, they're two ends of the spectrum. Um, I, I, it's a little pipe tobacco in there. Sorry. I, yeah, I, I just keep things... Just keep... I, I got some nice tobacco notes, too. If you haven't checked out Kentucky Peerless, you absolutely need to because everything that you love about bourbon, that's why you go to craft distilleries. That's why you go to small distilleries because you can get a flavor that you just can't get anywhere else. And even if you could get it from one of the big boys, you're going to pay a lot more than $124. Speaking of which... Speak of it. Remember the double oaked rye that we did not too long ago? Do I remember? What I mean, come Do on. I remember. And we also have a eight year single barrel rye that I picked up while we were there that we're gonna have to do an episode. We may have to do just a whole peerless a episode. A series of peerless. Yeah. So when you come to Kentucky, which we hope you will, and take the bourbon trail, make sure you swing into downtown Louisville and hop over to Peerless. You won't regret it. It's an excellent experience. It's a beautiful facility. One of my favorite tours. It, it is. And the product that they're putting out, and like I said, it's really easy. Can, can we do a quick story time? Story <laughs> do time. Do whatever you want, Charlie. Story time, Charlie. Went into Total Wine here in Louisville uh, this week. And I was amazed at just how expensive everything was. Is they had everything, and um, Henry McKenna is now seventy four dollars. Um, Sazerac Rye was readily available on the shelf, thirty six bucks. I mean, you just go down the list. Even things that we have done, the Augusta mm -hmm. eight, one hundred and twenty five bucks. Um, it, it's really easy to be just disenfranchised and say, yeah, there's a lot of stuff out, but it's all a hundred plus dollars and a lot of it is mystery bourbon you and, just don't know what it and, is and a lot of it you pay a hundred dollars for it and you're like eh, yeah that's okay yeah it, okay the i have no qualms these are worth every penny i feel like of <laughs> what we paid for this I, I mean compared to yeah go back 10 years and i i maybe not but in today's market, I that's, just, you pay $100 for something, you better get something that blows you away, right? Do you remember what you called our first Peerless episode we did? No. A bourbon without peer. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if there is anything or anybody out there that's putting out product that is this complex and depth of flavor and consistent and consistent just and yes it's 125 dollars. we know save your hate mail it's a lot of money to spend for brown water but if you're gonna spend it don't you want to spend it on something that's going to literally knock you on your butt like that you're going to have an experience that you will never forget because that's the whole point Absolutely. of this is to remember that bottle man years after it's gone You'll say to your buddy, hey, do you remember that peerless we had? And Charlie, sometimes we we do a lot of these reviews, right? One one or two. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we struggle to find words or to find descriptors or just struggle to talk about something. Yes. Because it's like, eh. Yeah. Have we struggled at all 
to have any words to describe <laughs> this no. this bottle, these bottles? No, because it tastes like it tastes <laughs> yes. and it smells like it smells. So let's rate it. So we're rating, we, we've we're rated this in the, the previous bourbon. episode. We're yeah. rating the bourbon. Oh, I think I gave the toasted an 8.75. 8. 8. Yeah. I will give this an 8.75. So, <laughs> in retrospect, I'm kind of wishing I would have given a higher score. To the toasted. To the toasted. Yeah. Because. I know. <laughs> I know. This I is, know. This is really freaking good. It is. But I feel like the toasted should be a little higher. But <sighs> I don't want to rate this lower than an 8.2. So, oh, gosh. You know what? <sighs> He's making up the rules as it goes along, <laughs> which he can do that because he's the co-founder of Sony De Bourbon no, and the rules no, 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 don't no. matter. I'm going to go, I'm going to rate this in 8.5. And we are going to come back to both of these bottles later yes. in the year. I like that. And we're going to re-rate them because, especially because these were the first, for me anyway, you've rated something in eight this year, I believe. These are the first above eight bottles yep. that I've had this year. Um, so we're going to have to revisit these. I, I will tell you why I rated them what I rated them is depending on my mood, they are both, they would both be a go-to. Like I, I would, like if I wanted that, if I wanted something on the sweeter side that is really sweet and spicy and crazy, I'm going toasted. If I want crazy bourbon flavor, I'm going eight year. And you know what? While you were talking, I was thinking about this. I am going to stick with my higher rating for the bourbon because you know why? Why? Because it's just a straight up bourbon. You stuck it in the barrel. You took it out eight years later. You didn't do anything else with it. And I'm going to give some extra credit and points for that. 100% agree. And if you have a craft distillery around you, let us know and tell us who we need to check out. We recently discovered Middle West Spirits in Ohio because one of our awesome subscribers sent us an email and said, hey, you need to check these guys out. So if there's somebody out there, we wanna know about it. So make sure you send us an email, bourbon at gmail.com. And if you are a craft distillery and are watching this, I don't know why you would be, but right. if you are, send us reach out stuff. to us, let us know. <laughs> no, seriously, we'd love to talk to you. We'd love to hear your story. Craft distilleries are where it's at. We love it. We'd love to come visit. We'd love to even do an episode. Absolutely. At your distillery. Make sure to follow and like and subscribe on the YouTube because that's the most important thing. Hit Absolutely. that little bell. Tell them about follow our socials. Follow us on socials, Instagram, So Into Bourbon, TikTok, Whiskey Realtor. I don't know if TikTok's going to be around any longer or not. We'll keep plugging Whatever. it until they We're take there. it away from us. Absolutely. And the absolute most important thing is you got to keep those wallets loose. And your bone holes tight. Good night, everybody. Peace out. Peerless. <laughs> All right. Ep no, don't need any more nuts. All right. What she say? <sighs> we got to got pushed through this. Bring the noise. Our good friends at Middle West love. Oh my gosh, look at it. Look at it. Look at it move. You mean look at it just jiggle? It's like jello. It's like jello, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. Oh yeah. Cut. Oh, you're just going to edit out the yeah, yeah. so? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, so. Yeah, so. Yeah, so. so you got to take the 405 back to the 27. Get off at Mulholland. <laughs> Jeez. I'm going to stop screwing around. Get serious here. I tried being serious. All I could get was construction work. Jeez. You ready? I was. <laughs> and then that happened. All right. Welcome to So. <laughs> Are you screwed up? Got to do an intro. Three, two, one. The Palette Destroyer episode, take two, action, part two. Uh.